Hello, I'm Leola Johnson, Associate Professor and Chair of the Media and Cultural Studies Department at McAllister College. I'm here at the Walker Cinema, where Dear White People just played to a sold out house for the Next Look series. A case study of the film was also presented at IFP Minnesota's 15th Annual Midwest Filmmaker Conference. I'm going to be joined by Dear White People's director, Justin Simeon, producer Effie Brown, and actors Tyler James Williams and Tessa Thompson. Roadside Attractions is opening Dear White People in the fall of 2014, and I hope all of you see this film, which was shot in Minneapolis. First of all, let me say that I really, really enjoyed this film. Thank you so much. It, was, it spoke to me on so, in so many different ways. Um, it, be, first of all, because we at McAllister College, where I teach, had mm -hmm. a, um, a a politically incorrect party seven mm -hmm. years ago, and I was just right in the middle of that mm -hmm. when I was looking at the end of your sure. film. I was like, "Okay, this I've been here," mm -hmm. but but also because um, you know of your connecting your film with uh, old, the work of other black filmmakers and if you're thinking about it being in a black world and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And so I'm, I'm really interested in something that Effie said um, yesterday, last night when I listened to the uh, audience response, which was that she hoped that this film would spark a movement, a conversation. And my uh, question is, what do you want it to be a conversation about? Yeah. What do, all, what do I want it to be? Yeah, what do you want it to be a conversation about? Um, you know, I think for me the movie is about, it's about identity. And I, I always wanted to create a film that is going to challenge my audience, be they black or white. And, you know, I want the conversation to be about themselves and, and who they are and how they've been sort of representing or not representing their true, their, their true selves. You know, one of the most interesting things, experiences for me in making the film, and she's not here, but one of our other producers, mm -hmm. Lena, Lena Waith, who uh, you know had read every draft of the script, had been through you know all of the production, all of obviously had you know been there when we table read it, been there when we cast it, and you know I showed her the rough cut, and she like had to take a minute, and I was like, "What's going on? Did you like it? What do you think?" And she was like, "You know, what? I'm I'm a little messed up right now," and I was like, "Why?" She's like, "Because all this time I thought I was Sam White." but I'm actually Troy <laughs> and, ah. and you know, and the fact that, and we sat there and had this conversation about the weight of our black identities and, 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 and she's been a part of the project for so long and yet we had a new conversation about it mm -hmm. and me making the film and showing it to her, uh, even at the rough cut stage, those are the kind of conversations I want people to have mm -hmm. at, at a micro level. On a macro level, I think because we are in this, you know, air quotes, post-racial America, which is, you know, a fantasy, of course, mm -hmm. we're sort of like, I think we are struggling struggling with how to talk about things that right. feel like politically incorrect to talk about and have mm -hmm. conversations across, you know, races and genders and sexual orientations that feel inappropriate, but we need to have those conversations, um, you know, on a national level. And I think uh, we're in a country where we have, we wait for things to bubble up, you know, to national scandal size before mm -hmm. we're willing to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully my movie can, can provoke some of those conversations before we get there again. Mm -hmm. I can see how that works, that kind of analysis of I, this film being about identity, mm -hmm. works with most of the characters in the movie. I don't understand fully how it works in relation to the white characters, mm -hmm. and especially to the kind of fraternity boys. I'm, that's not the way to characterize them, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. to the, the uh, president's son mm -hmm. and to... Um, to that whole formation that put together sure. the party. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, you know, for me, the, the film is really from the point of views of the four black characters. Okay. Uh, which is not to say that, you know, the, the, the point of views of the other characters are not important, but mm -hmm. it really is, it is their four stories that we're dealing with. And I think part of what Kurt struggles with, and I think, you know, whenever people see the film, I think there's been a lot of conversation and speculation over just who throws the party, who exactly is responsible for what in the end. Um, but for 
for me, like I think I think something that I've just experienced, and, and I'm not saying this is you know about all white people or anything, but there's been a sort of resistance to understanding my minority experience because they themselves don't feel as if they've participated in any in any in any explicit racism. Mm -hmm. They're right. tolerant, or they voted Democratic, or they listen to Beyonce, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. They feel like they're sort of off the hook when they're not listening to an experience that I'm trying to, to talk about. And I think you know I think all of the characters in my film are, are flawed in some way. Mm -hmm. They all have you know heroic and sort of villainous aspects to their characters and their decisions. And I think one of Kurt's flaws, the president's son, is that he he's a bit intolerant to the minority point of view. He has mm -hmm. a sort of entitled sense to you know his beliefs, and he's not really willing to have them be challenged mm -hmm. in the ways that sort of the, the black characters in the film, frankly, every day they have to challenge mm -hmm. you know their view of the world because the world that they're in doesn't quite see them. Mm -hmm. And and I think that that's what those characters are about. And because they're not the the main protagonists, they, they have to sort of be in relation to my you know my main characters' mm -hmm. arcs. And mm -hmm. and that's in, that those are the ways in which I think they point and counterpoint mm -hmm. the identity struggle. But mm -hmm. interestingly enough, I feel like Kurt to me that some one redeeming thing about him is I feel like he says something that spurns uh, Brandon Bell's character, yeah, Troy, in a, in a kind of a positive way, although it, it's not immediately apparent, but he says to him, get off the board, and mm -hmm. he's talking about him not being a pawn in what his father's uh, grand mm -hmm. plan is for him. And I think when we talk about identity, sometimes there are trappings maybe racially, but there are also just the family that we come Absolutely. from mm -hmm. that don't allow us to really have a true expression of who we are. Mm -hmm. And Kurt sees that in him and challenges it in him. It's not necessarily for a positive thing in that mm -hmm. particular moment because mm -hmm. it's in the orchestration of the party, but he does say to him, but it comes he does a say to him, be, your, be who you are, mm -hmm. be who you want to be. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that that's interesting, particularly coming from this mm -hmm. character and maybe that gets overshadowed by you know him also saying other things that are <laughs> offensive or whatever but I think that's an interesting point in his personality mm -hmm. and makes him more rounded than you know people might want to think he is mm -hmm. and yeah. certainly more rounded than his father mm -hmm. yes which is mm -hmm. another character I want to get to right. his father the president mm. you know I so I I follow the everybody is complicated mm -hmm. analysis until I get to mm. the president mm. so what are the complications of the president? Well, you know, the college. I, I think I think the president is actually struggling with the uh, uh, issues of perception. You know, I think he, as would be his actual role in the in the you know in, in the college life, is is how the school is being perceived. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, you know, leaders, because they are sort of looking at things mm -hmm. from a macro pr perspective, mm -hmm. get caught up in things like perception, mm -hmm. as opposed to actually getting into the weeds of what is the problem. So when he encounters a figure like Sam White, it's far too, I think he finds it far too complicated to really get into. He needs to shut it down mm -hmm. because his, his larger role is to protect the school. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, you know, there are some things as sort of vile and and you know har, har, you know harmful as some of his ideas are you sort of can kind of maybe see where he maybe mm -hmm. is coming from because the argument of like I think you want there to be this big horrible problem because that's what you hang your identity hat on he says he's got a Things line like that to Sam mm -hmm. that is that's a real thing that I've heard that ha made me take aback and sort of think about that like mm -hmm. is my black identity rooted in just needing to be conflicted over my black identity mm -hmm. is he right about that and I think you know he's written in a way that I, I think I, th I, I think that like he's hit people's ears in a way that that is you know challenging because there is a, a kernel of truth in what he's saying mm -hmm. and uh, to me that's you know that's as I, yeah. I think I think that that sort of is what is complicated about him to me mm -hmm. and just to, just to sort of talk a little bit about talking about the film becoming a movement and a conversation in regards to the characters dealing with black identity one of the things that I loved about this film was that we kind of gave a voice to I think a white perspective that either hasn't been really cool to talk about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel, and this is just, um, I'm a little <laughs> older and have, you know, and being in, already graduated from school and being in the workforce and hearing people who actually like, oh, I'm not a racist, I we're totally fine. Mm -hmm. And and I think by them seeing this movie to see, see how the, what you're saying could actually be perceived as racist mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. actually not being as cool and as liberal as you think. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I loved, like Kurt, you're right to me, like to Kurt, he's um, 
talking to me, he talks about affirmative action, like, you know who's not the president of the United States? The guy that didn't get into Harvard. Mm -hmm. You know, where every joke has a bit of truth. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times white, um, I'll say, I feel, and from the people that I've spoken to, mm -hmm. they're like, yeah, I kind of feel like that. Mm -hmm. And it's good to, you know, um, and to actually have it, to be given a voice, mm -hmm. and to actually be able to talk, uh, you know, to have that be a part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Because I feel a lot of times white folks, don't feel that they're able to have a conversation about race without mm -hmm. being labeled a racist. Right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know, and I think this film with humor, mm -hmm. it's like, everybody, let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. It's also, I mean, it kind of makes sense to this uh, problem of these race related parties happening on college campuses because they become the impetus, hopefully, to talk about these things. And I think that's why in Dear White People, the college landscape is the perfect place because uh. it is the time when you when you have this a safe space to really talk about ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and so I hope, I mean, I don't know how it happened, how it went down on your campus, but... <laughs> I know, I want to hear about it, actually. <laughs> <I'm like, laughs> but, we were going to shoot at McAllister, but anyway. <laughs> right? but, I, but, I, but I think the, the one benefit maybe is when it does happen is that you go, okay, so let's talk about this. And that's something that Sam White says. She goes, and it doesn't matter who through the party the fact is people showed up and they and now they show our campus where we're at so what do we do mm -hmm. about it um mm -hmm. so so can i just say how it went down on our campus for please a second? Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Now. Like, is, well we had you know a day of education you know that the the president shut everything down and people volunteered to do th these little um you know, many classes for okay. students, and a lot of the white students who put together the politically incorrect party, which is what they called it. And oh, they called it a politically they, incorrect. They party. called it the politically incorrect. This happened in 2007, and students showed up at this party. It was over uh, the break, January break. They showed up in blackface, mm. and some of them did, and with this, one of them dressed up as an aborted fetus. Mm. Mm. Uh, and you know, I, I mean, like, they, they went. They went there. They like, went yeah. all the way. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, they said, "Yeah, let's go to everything." And you know, one one person showed up with a noose around his neck, an African American person mm. with a noose around his neck. Uh. And so we had these little mini classes. And the one I did was on blackface. Mm. Mm -hmm. I did, you know, on the history of blackface. Yeah. And what was really astonishing to me was that so many of these students who were didn't he, know. they didn't they didn't know. know. Yeah. I don't think it's malicious. They just don't know. So that brings me back to a um, question relevant to your film, which is how much of this kind of identity um, exploration and also of the behavior of the white students is generational? How mm. much of it has to do with the fact that they didn't know and that people older than, than them, raising my hand, would have known more about, would have been more settled in their identities, right. would have known more or should about we let it go? I mean, there's, and this is a question that I love to asking, you know, when watching this movie mm -hmm. and reading it and saying, am I bringing, because I'm, am I bringing my old baggage right. to something where these kids, and it's true, these kids are like, I voted for Obama, it's I know Jay-Z, Beyonce, I know more, like, like yeah. black culture is American culture. Right, right. You can't yeah. co-opt it right. anymore. Right. And and, right. and I feel, mm. and it's something to talk about. Like that's the thing that I love. Like you're bringing it up. Yeah. You're not saying this feel this way or that. And you're saying it with humor, which mm -hmm. makes it great. Mm -hmm. Like talking about like the Juliana Howe, you mm -hmm. know, uh, whatever. You know, with the you know uh, black is not. Um, or just the or just black. 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 Huff. 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 Yeah. Sorry, Howe. No, Thank I you. Am. But like, no, I'm talking. I'm maligning somebody else. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. But you know, I don't think it was malicious. She wasn't doing it like mm -hmm. old Al Jolson. She did. Of a nation, yeah. you know, but that sort of thing. But the funny thing is, yeah. you go back to Al Jolson, he also, it wasn't like, in, in, in their perspective, they weren't specifically trying to put black people down. Mm -hmm. To them, it was a celebratory, you know, piece yeah. of entertainment. And it, it always has, I mean, the thing is, is that. Come like, it was at the, it's, it, that wasn't, they weren't trying to celebrate black culture. You think so? But I don't think that they felt like they were doing anything malicious. They, they, they thought that, okay. I don't think they felt like by making the, you know, the, the, the jazz singer, like, I'm going to make black people feel bad like I don't think that crossed we, 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 we wasn't, didn't cross their mind no, it wasn't for we black were, people it yeah, wasn't for black people yeah. exactly yeah. it wasn't even it wasn't even considered like, no it was no like it wasn't no. even a thought in the head yeah, I don't want to be professorial at this moment mm -hmm. but there's been a lot of stuff written about blackface minstrelsy that is really yeah. really interesting mm -hmm. and about mm -hmm. the ways in which uh, 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 new immigrants from Europe performed absolutely. You know, bought their way into whiteness yep. by performing in blackface yes. on stage, and and it's a really interesting. Yeah. Um, 
um, body of literature. But so, so let me um, try to follow up on something about the film. Sure. Uh, <laughs> um, and that is this question of genre. Mm. You know, uh, you talked about you know operating in the genre it's in, and I have to admit that I wasn't sure. <laughs> where I would place this film generically. Well, you know what, the thing, the thing about genre is interesting. There's actually, there's two versions of genre, right? When we talk uh -huh. about movies, there's uh -huh. the genre that we market a film as, uh -huh. which can be science fiction, it can be a Western, it yeah. can be action, it can be adventure, it can yeah. be comedy, whatever. Yeah. That's actually very different than the genre, the story genre it's in. And when I say genre, I mean, you know, what, what, are, what are the components of this particular story from a structure standpoint? Okay. And, you know, the idea of doing a, a multi-protagonist story, so a story that comes from multiple Mm -hmm. points of view, mm -hmm. that in and of itself is a genre that you could do a science fiction story in it, you could, mm -hmm. do, a, you could do a Western, you could do a comedy. That was, that was the, uh, you know, that's sort of what I, I was trying to get at because, and I, and I love those kinds of movies because when I'm talking about a topic this big, it just doesn't feel satisfactory for me to talk about it from one point of view, mm -hmm. one single protagonist's point of view. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why movies that I, I reference from Do the Right Thing to Election to Fame to Royal Tenenbaums, they, they're so successful because they, they, they dissect an issue from all these very interesting and disparate points of views mm -hmm. and that particular you know doing that with humor um, you know it, it's it's a it's not an easy thing to figure out how to do because it's not the most popular storied sort of you know form of American cinema it's it's got a rich and wonderful tradition but it's not sort of what they teach you how to write in film school uh -huh. and um, and for me sort of drilling down and, and realizing that this genre sort of exists across all of these marketed genres and sort of really figuring out how these movies operate uh, was a big part of like getting the screenplay done. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, separate from genre, there's there's the tone, there's the style. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a satire, it's satirical. Mm -hmm. That sort of allows me to place it in a bit more of a hyper reality. Mm -hmm. The characters can be a bit more archetypal mm -hmm. and they can sort of get into ideas as opposed to necessarily staying in a sort of gritty, cinema verite, slice of life kind of place. Mm -hmm. You know, I, because it is a bit satirical, I was able to sort of make it a little bit broader and have these characters represent a lot more than, you know, mm -hmm. just a person, for instance, mm -hmm. in this particular circumstance. Mm -hmm. they, you know, Sam White is a, a per, an archetype that exists, sure, on college campuses, but in the workforce as adults. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's uh, the things that happen in this movie to me, really, it, through the microcosm of a college, talk about a much larger American experience, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. Did you know that you were was going to work before you screened this film? I thought it was funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> were you, did you, were you pleased with, the, I mean, how many times, that's sorry, a good question. You. So sorry. How many times have you screened the film now? Oh gosh, we screened it, um, I mean, we screened it a number of times at Sundance. I think it was five times at Sundance. Five times, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, five times at Sundance. We screened it a couple times in New York, uh -huh. a few times in uh, Atlanta, San Francisco, Boston, and now here. Uh -huh. um, but before we got to Sundance, we were testing it out with uh, audiences, mm -hmm. uh, very small sort of audiences that we thought made up mm -hmm. our target. Mm -hmm. Some folks outside of the target just to, you know, see what the boundaries right. of the reaction uh -huh, was going to be. Uh -huh. And that gave a good sense of what played and what didn't uh -huh. from a comedic standpoint. Yeah, I, th I think you're a very talented comedic writer. Oh, thanks. I, th I thought it was funny. Thank you. Yeah, and, and no, I did. I thought it was funny. I did think it was funny. Thank you. But I also thought it was funny and also dramatic mm -hmm. in the way that one of Spike Lee's most maligned films mm. ever is both funny and dramatic, mm. and that is uh, Bamboozle. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you know, so, so it makes that shift mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. comedy to tragedy and then back to, mm -hmm. oh, gosh. Sure. he never shifts like back. That, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he never shifts back, but you do. Yeah, 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 I mean, mm -hmm. you know, Bamboozle certainly left a mark on me. Mm -hmm. It certainly left a mark on me, and I get why it's sort of, you know, maligned and can be controversial and certainly, you know, uh, divisive and polarizing, but God, that movie really left a dent in my soul. Mm -hmm. You know, when we get, when you get to the end of that film and, it, and, and really, truly, it was very prophetic because he was talking about something very particular to that time, mm -hmm. but as time has gone on, I have to say, like it's, it feels, <laughs> it feels strangely like he mm -hmm. was, t he could see into the future mm -hmm. in, in a lot of ways, and he kind of, it wasn't quite reality, but he kind of predicted what's been going on in reality Maybe, TV, yeah, definitely, and just sort of mm -hmm. the, a choice that people make to sort of 
put on a version of themselves for mm -hmm. the entertainment of the masses. It's mm -hmm. sort of, you know, the, the idea that reality is the new menstrual show is not entirely incorrect yeah. in certain instances. That's absolutely true. I, I really liked the uh, the narrative thing about reality TV mm -hmm. in, the, in, in your film, sure. too. But I wondered about the end where the the guy takes the money. <laughs> I mean, you know, talk to me about that because <laughs> is, he, is he after like, isn't he after the money to be made from producing the show? Which which one, Helmet? The the um, black guy, the African American, the African American yeah. guy who, yeah, the producer, the yeah. producer. Isn't he after that and not after like a bribe? Am I reading the film incorrectly when I see him saying the president asked him how much money do you want? No, no how, mu how much money are you offering us? Are you offering us? Yeah, to okay, shoot I'm here. So <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you for clearing that yeah, up because sure. I was like, really? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, one of the, you know, it's one of those things. It was a great scene and we had to cut it because it was just, it was too, it, the story was sort of dragging at the end and we had to cut the scene. But there's a scene between uh, Helmut and Coco and they have a heart to heart. And he's basically making an offer for her to be a part of the show. And he says, um, you know, he says, listen, it's the same out there as it is in here like I'm the black person in the room I got to make the black shows mm -hmm. and it's sometimes it's it, you know for me helmet is is really he's a way of articulating that how the pressure sort of continues for the rest of your life like mm -hmm. you know this this pressure to hang your hat on your racial identity mm -hmm. you know it's a double-edged sword it can get really ugly out there and a lot of times you find yourself making decisions and sort of trying to push things through so that you can find a personal success mm -hmm. and you know how much you sell yourself out is always you know it's all it was always in my head certainly mm -hmm. when I was a part of you know the professional studio nine to five world uh -huh. um, and and even as a filmmaker now deciding what my next projects are how do I want to set myself up what kind of filmmaker am I what are the things I want to say like how much of that do I do I want to rest in my race identity mm -hmm. because at what point am I just selling out mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. it's a question I think we all grapple with yeah I, one of the things I think this film does really really well is to is to uh, take a position or construct a position around sexuality that for example Spike Lee never does mm. that you know other filmmakers never do about you know there being not just sort of homophobia in the black community but also um, you know uh, the opportunity for interaction and and growth and development in the black community and also the sort of the uh, the interaction between um, your character and the uh, white guy who is the uh, Kurt Kurt right right who is the the uh, newspaper no, George. George. Oh, oh George George, George. George. oh wow okay, yeah. George yeah yeah although I didn't quite understand him as a character or what he was up to George George, George right I didn't quite well, understand I mean I think I think George is very interesting and I know Justin can probably tell of this more but I think. Um, with the campus being where it was and it being in this kind of like, there was a, there was a fire that was kind of cooking and building up. Everybody, as far as the journalists were concerned, they knew that they had to cover it in some way. Mm -hmm. um, but what, what I kind of felt in their relationship was that George understood that he could not cover it. You know, if he had covered it, it would have you know been perceived differently, and he needed a black guy. Mm -hmm. He needed the black guy to kind of get that done. Mm -hmm. um, you know, by any means kind of necessary and although there was a natural attraction there mm -hmm. um, it was more about kind of getting you know his place in the world and setting uh -huh. his place in the world and I think that's okay. what happens a lot is it, it, in the same way that we have to grapple with <coughs> with the things that we find offensive and, and the things that <coughs> that we feel we need to take stands on you know there's a whole nother aspect of the world that has to cover that as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and in a lot of ways it is you know this in a media fueled world you know kind of like recently with the whole the whole Clipper mm -hmm. situation, you know, just as much as we had, were up there, <coughs> it made a lot of money covering it, yeah. media-wise. And I think that's where kind of George stood on that side of, I'm not going to kind of integrate myself into this at all, mm -hmm. but somebody's got to cover this mm -hmm. and it might as well be me. Mm -hmm. um, which I thought was just an, another really interesting aspect of the story of like, you know, while... There's a way to capitalize on Yeah, there's always a way to capitalize, mm -hmm. whether it be, you know, Helmet or George, somebody's going to capitalize in mm -hmm. some way. Mm -hmm. um, and usually it's those who don't kind of get themselves into it at all, but mm -hmm. just stand on the outside perspective and um, and kind of give the world all the news. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many, how many, like, black talking heads 
made money this week. You know yeah. what I mean? Like people who, yeah. who get, you know, black, whether they're black, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong about it, but mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's sort of like, let's get the black expert. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, that's, that's how it works. And mm -hmm. I'm not even saying there's something wrong with how that works, but that's just, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And it's, there's something a little unseemly, but kind of okay about it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know, I just thought that was an interesting aspect of the issue. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, but, but, but the other thing I really liked was when, um, now I'm forgetting the character's <laughs> name. No worries. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just sorry. Yeah. Give well, it yeah. The, the, okay. the, 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 um, uh, Dean of Students' son. Mm -hmm. Troy. 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 When Troy says, I got your back to, um, Lionel. 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 Right. Thank you for helping I'm me. Help. I do that all the time. I'm not the only one who makes me feel good. There's a lot That's of characters. I'm like, thank you. There's a lot. Yeah. I'm like, what's that? Uh, you know, <laughs> You're not the only one. It's okay. I should back. This is kind of a sort of an anti, you know, homophobia is rampant in the black community and mm. is beyond redemption. And uh, and I think that's really an interesting and and important intervention in that mm -hmm. in that in I did that too debate. yeah I, I felt like uh, it was a little subversive but you know I, I liked the idea that the character who makes the biggest shift who sort of like doesn't know where he fits in the beginning and then firmly makes a choice mm -hmm. I like the idea that that was a kind of character that never ever gets talked about or represented in these films mm -hmm. which is a black man who is gay or at the very least you know not sure what he is mm -hmm. you know depending on how you read the film mm -hmm. and uh, that to me was a subversive thrill to sort of make Lionel be the one mm -hmm. who sort of makes that decision you know towards the end of the film and, and and I also wanted to say, like, there, there is a, there is certainly rampant homophobia in the African American community, in the African American community. Mm -hmm. But there's also people who are tolerant and understanding too. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes the fear that there's that you won't be accepted is 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 greater than the reality. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. you know, the, there is a whole moment. For light, yeah. When, for yeah, when Lionel gets approached by the, uh, the BSU and they're like, yeah. you know, all of us are not homophobic. Are not homophobes. And yeah. like, you're scared of black people, aren't you? Yeah. And he has to lie and kind of say no, but we so all like, know that's true. Right? <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. actually, yeah. that's actually more his issue when he moves in with uh, Troy, he's kind of, sp they have that moment, that exchange, which has to do actually with Star Trek. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to do with his mm -hmm. sexual identity, but yeah. his racial identity. Mm -hmm. I mean, really what it's about is like, am I allowed to be this version of black around other black people? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really what it, that's the that's the more universal way to look at it, whether mm -hmm. it's because, you know, he's gay or he's a trekker or whatever it is. Like, you know, he's sort of struggling with like, am I allowed in this space? And culture and, and people who are the loudest and, and form cliques and packs would say no. Mm -hmm. That's the impression you get but Lionel's journey is about trying anyway mm -hmm. to show up you mm -hmm. know for in in his own community mm -hmm. um, and in a lot of ways it's a self-inflicted wound mm -hmm. and so in some ways it's not mm -hmm. um, and, mm -hmm. and that's that's just the truth of the situation mm -hmm. it's not black and white well it's very con it, I, I uh, applaud the complexity with which you handle this in, this in this film yeah and and the other thing I wanted to just mention was that I, you know, to me, the sort of everyday, ordinary, unmarked use of pot mm. in this film is also really interesting. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and, and you know, everybody's smoking weed in this film, <laughs> or at least many people, not the president and the yeah. dean of students or California. Those scenes were cut, you know. <laughs> you think that's California? I mean, not, it's meant to be any anywhere USA, but uh -huh. he happened to be writing the movie while you uh, we were in California. It also I happens. Think it's a college yeah, it also happens in college. College. Yeah, college. college. Yeah, 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 you know, for me, the weed thing is, it's sort of a narrative device. Like, I don't even know if I'm making a specific statement about marijuana use <laughs> yeah. among students, but... Uh, a narrative device in what sense? In the sense that, like, I needed to show, I needed to show how Troy, I needed to show that Troy was, was struggling in some way with being a version of himself that right. wasn't him. Mm -hmm. And that was, it's a, that was that moment that we're talking about in, this, in the film. It's a visual way to show that he's, that he's trying to get, he's trying to sort of numb himself through a moment mm -hmm. and without him having to talk about it. Yeah, and that's yeah. really, that's really what it was to me. You mm -hmm. know? It wasn't necessarily like a statement either way about, 
about his smoking weed. It was mm-hmm. just like interesting that he is always smoking when he's faced with having to mm-hmm. put it on. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. and that's you know that's all it was really to me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, you know, there's so many interesting things in this film. That's why it's very difficult to to you know nail myself down, sure. and especially <laughs> since I can't remember what the names of all the characters. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 I was I also really really interested in the question of mixed race identity. Mm. That's because at, at McAllister, this is like a very big thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, this this generation of students is uh, of our students, of our students of color. Are you know? I wouldn't say that they're majority mixed race, but there are a lot more mixed race students mm. among my students than there were among my peers when mm. I was a student mm-hmm. back in the dark ages. <laughs> um, you know? yeah. and, 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 the, and the kind of you know, way in which um, everybody deals with this kind of race mixing, sure. um, you know, with Troy's white girlfriend, with your character's black, a uh, white boyfriend and black boyfriend, and mm-hmm. you know, you have lots of boyfriends, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> all different types of boyfriends, well, she likes shades it. and colors. Uh, you know, it's this is another example of the many ways of being black. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Um, and, and, it, and it's also just yeah. a, a reality of being a quote black face in a white place like when you are you know my current ex- my, in the current version of that experience for me is just you know I work and live in Hollywood mm-hmm. and my friends are of all races but I often find myself at either like a predominantly white party function mm. whatever or a predominantly black you know I, I still find myself toggling a bit you know I don't I don't really think I put on mm-hmm. anymore I feel like I'm a much more integrated person than I was in college but I mean the truth of the matter is like yeah I mean you know to me interracial dating is just sort of like well yeah cuz I mean it's it just it just the odds are better yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean there's more people to choose from yeah. and, and and I'm in between all of these worlds anyway um, but I, I, I but it is it is a question and a conversation that often comes up it's like is it okay are you okay is that what you want is that you know and and I, I thought it was I thought I, I wanted them all to have like a different shade of it you know uh-huh. and, I don't know. That's what I thought that'd be interesting and and subversive to to do. I didn't even realize <laughs> until now how much, how many like interracial dating conflicts there are. Yeah, yeah, movie. Everybody has a side piece. Everybody does. <laughs> like, but it's kind of like what the world is heading to now. Like I, I have a lot of friends. I mean, I think especially in this generation who are of you know mixed um, mixed descent. You know, they're they're biracial and. To watch and see what they claim mm-hmm. is always really interesting, especially when watching sure. you know, Sam's journey mm-hmm. and seeing how a lot of them just kind of claim black or yeah. you know will claim white for some reason. But even even Coco, who sort of pretends like she doesn't like black guys, just so she doesn't get rejected by them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you know her that scene with with her and Troy. Um, it's interesting because among my black friends, the question of whether or not you want to date someone of the same race or whether or not you don't care or you specifically like this or that, it's always a racially charged um, response. It's never like, I just want to meet someone. You know, it's like I've made a decision based upon my race. Like mm-hmm. it, it feels so, we, I think there's a pressure to really argument a philosophy about it. You know, even yeah. the, even my friend, even the, you know, my black friends that just date other black people, like it's, you know, they're, they're, it's like a political statement almost. And, and, and there's this pressure to make some kind of statement. When, and it's a, it's kind of an unnecessary pressure, I think, that is unique to minorities. Yeah. And, uh, it, you know, in terms of romantic relationships and um, I just thought that'd be an interesting thing to discuss. And, and for Coco, it's so interesting. I I get the sense from her character that you know there's that great moment where she enters the party and wants to be oh, so heartbreaking. Wants to be <laughs> noticed and seen by these mm. white guys, and then she realizes that mm, they're, they're not, not they're not checking for her, <laughs> as it were. <laughs> and and she deals with that. And it's, it's so interesting because it does. You don't even get the sense necessarily or, that or she, she or that she, she got she, Mitch, who, or that she, right, who was like, like extra checking for her. Who's checking for her? <laughs> who's checking for her in a weird way, yeah, in a like, fetishy way that's also way. strange. Yeah. 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 So it's yeah. it's that thing of like not wanting to be not wanting to be the person that is not being seen because mm. of your race, but and also not wanting to be seen just, just because kind of, of your mm, race yeah. and how that plays out with, you know, with uh, our sexual identity and romantically totally. is really interesting. It's I mean, minefield. From, yeah. right, it is, it really <laughs> is. It's really so, so let me get, get back to something you said and then to a question about audience and about the release of the film uh, in the fall and where you expect it to 
you know, produce its most mm -hmm. enthusiastic audiences. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so you said that that in the world that you live, that we live in now, there's all this race mixing, and in the world I live in right now, there's all this race mixing in in the college world, in the world of an elite liberal arts college. Mm. But in the world I go back to when I visit my family, there is not a lot of race mixing. Mm -hmm. It's still a fairly segregated world. If you look at the racial dynamics of like the school systems in this country, that's still a really segregated world. There's not a lot of race mixing. And so I'm wondering whether you, th where, what places you think this film is going to play in, mm. um, where are the enthusiastic audiences going to come from? Are they going to be liberal arts college student yeah. audiences <laughs> or, you know, art house audiences? Absolutely. Or are they going to be... Yes to all the above. Yes, all of them. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, it's a the, new yeah. world order. Yeah. Okay. It's I a mean, new day. Okay. I mean, the fun thing about going to festivals is that you really get to mm -hmm. uh, get to see it in real life, you know? You get to see... Mm -hmm. I got to see this movie play to a mostly white audience in Salt Lake City and okay. play, like, gangbusters yeah. okay. and then kill at a mostly black audience in Atlanta and okay. then to a completely mixed sort of intelligentsia crowd in Boston and New York it's been interesting uh -huh. to see it continue to connect, uh, you know, across all the audiences. I think the major urban markets obviously is where you start with a film like okay. this. Okay. You know, places where people are sort of primed for that conversation and are mixed up for whatever reason and having it anyway in their everyday life. But mm -hmm. I think people would be really surprised at the other places that it, it will expand to and go. And mm -hmm. one can't ever say until we start doing it. But right. just, I mean, so far so good is kind of what it, it seems, you know, just from the concept trailer days, because we made a concept trailer first and, you know, on YouTube, you can see where all your views come from, and on Indiegogo, you can see where all your money comes from, and uh -huh. it was a very, very racially diverse, and I don't even, mm -hmm. it wasn't even black dominant, mm -hmm. our fan base, like, it was mm -hmm. all over the place, mm -hmm. and all over the country, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and from disparate parts of the world, right. people were sort of, kind of like, somehow finding something in, in, in just the three minute concept trailer that was connecting to their experience so much that they had to give money to it and share it. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think people will be surprised and I think that's sort of part of our sort of side mission too, yeah. is like proving that like, you know, a, a smart house film, so a film that is like unconventional in its narrative style right. mm -hmm. and talking okay. to and talking explicitly to the human condition mm -hmm. works whether it has black people in it or not. Right. And, right. and that's, that's the movement part too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's like, sort of, that's that's I like that smart it. house. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. sort that's of. That's really great. Because it's not, it's not yeah. art house. Like it's smart not, house, it's, it's not, great. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's not, you know, it's not avant-garde really, yeah. but it's, mm -hmm. it's traditional in a lot of ways mm -hmm. in terms of the narrative. But, mm -hmm. you know, you look at a Wes Anderson movie and he's someone that we often bring up, but it's it's like mm -hmm. these movies, like it's just sort of a given that they're going to play. Mm -hmm. And by the way, like me and all my black friends went to go see his last film. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the fear is, well, if we make it about a black experience or there's black people in it, maybe that same smart house and air quotes audience won't show up. And I think they will. Mm -hmm. And it'll be interesting to, to prove that. Okay, that's really great. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 you may have noticed that I have resisted. <laughs> asking you the Tyler Perry question. Oh, okay. I didn't know. But here it is now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but 20 minutes later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I, I love that question. Yeah, no, but, I, but, I, no, I, but I want to ask it in a different way, okay. which is where do you, where would you locate yourself and this film mm. in the, in the, you know, universe of black filmmakers? Mm. Who are your role models? Who do you look up to? Who do you look up to a little bit, but not entirely? Oh. <laughs> you know, uh, okay. you know, you know. What, so, what, who are your like? Who are your favorite like um, white filmmakers? You know, mm -hmm. what in the history? Where do you you know? Where do you think this this film fits in? I can't, you know, I, I, I would never presume to, to say where my that's film... That's a big question. That's a loaded question. You know, yeah. I, it, and what kind of filmmakers do you want to look up to you? Yeah, what kind do you want to look up to? Where do you fit in the scope of film history? <laughs> exactly. I don't know. I, that a question I can't answer. I will say that I, you know, I'm a fan of the auteur directors. I'm a fan of the directors who, it feels like it's their vision. They had something very specific and unique to say about the human condition that makes me look at my life in a new way. Okay. Those are the directors I love. And, okay. I, and, and it's Kubrick and it's Fellini 
mm -hmm. and it's Bob Fosse, and mm -hmm. it's Spike Lee, of course, okay. and it's Woody Allen uh -huh. and P.T. Anderson, okay. and you know those uh, those are the those are sort of the ones that I go back to uh -huh. over and over again. Is uh -huh. the people who who had the guts to say, I want to talk about this thing from my point of view, uh -huh. and in doing that, say something brand new to everybody. Okay. That's what you know. Those are the ones that are on my vision board. Uh, okay, <laughs> you know? all so, right, that's so, great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So. Effie, I heard you say that you did, you produce in the studio, of your, that you do a lot of production. Mm -hmm. Are most of your projects with black films? Are they you with? You know, I, um, I'm pretty diverse. I made sure at the very beginning of my career uh -huh. um, that I was not going to be pigeonholed as a black producer doing black things. Okay. Um, you know, well, it's true, but well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just being, I'm a, you're kind of pretty, but like, <laughs> but, being, but I'm going to make, I made, I made sure because they are always very quick to pigeonhole you yeah, yeah. of that's what you, uh -huh. that's what you're only going to do. Uh -huh. I definitely, and the films that I, um, you know, started out with, um, as being a woman of color and handling money in production mm -hmm. were the people who gave me a shot. And that happened to be um, a lot of the uh, gay and lesbian films, mm -hmm. like from But I'm a Cheerleader mm -hmm. uh -huh. and from Desert Blue. Like those are the people who were like, oh great, we don't care what color you are, here's some money, yeah. uh -huh. go make our movie. Okay. And then sort of graduating my way to Stranger Inside, which was by Cheryl Dunier, which yeah, is yeah. here. Uh -huh. um, I mean, that was a black woman in prison. Yeah. And then I went and did a Latino film, uh -huh. The Women Have Curves, uh -huh. Jane Campion. You know, I, I uh -huh. tried to mix uh -huh. it up yeah. um, because I believe in making quality films regardless of what color they are. Okay. That's what I feel. Okay. It seems like you, but films with strong female characters. Which is really interesting. So. I've yeah. always, I've, de I've, I def, yes. I mean, if there's anything That's that um, yeah, yeah. has yeah. always been for strong female characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And the one film like Rocket Science was a, yeah, mm -hmm. that's probably that's really yeah. true. That was the one film that didn't really happen. Anna Kendra came out of that. Okay. Anyway, what I, I'm babbling right now. <laughs> no, no, um, no. This is really interesting. But that is what I do. But that that is something. And and doing you know, dear white people. One of the things that I loved about dear white people was that to me. And this is I mean, I loved hearing everyone talk about. It. We've been together like forever mm -hmm. talking about it. But to me, it felt very multicultural. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I felt. I know we really go on like black identity, but I really felt that this was something. You know, Sung Mi, like who's Naomi Ko, who spoke about it so eloquently last mm -hmm. night, about like this is, it brings up of being the other. And I think it's really interesting because I think a lot of white people also feel Absolutely. like they're yeah. the other. Mm -hmm. And this is a film to me that made it like, this is, for me, if I was gonna type what movie this is in my sort of repertoire of like, this is my movie about the other mm -hmm. and sort of gaining mm -hmm. balance and understanding through all different types of others, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. Oh, it makes a lot of sense, yeah, yeah. So, you know, let me go back to uh, Tyler Perry. Sure. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm all, Tyler Perry's awesome. He's a great businessman. He's a great businessman. He's a great businessman. He's a great he's business a great man. He knows how to tap man. into an audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why do people keep asking you about Tyler Perry? I mean, I asked for it because it's in the movie like yeah. several times. The thing is, like, I'm making a I'm making a self-aware satirical film about black people. Mm -hmm. Like they, you know what we talk about? We talk about Tyler Perry. We talk about Michael Jackson. I mean, we just do. Like mm -hmm. it's just it's just, that's I'm being honest about it and because for a long time and it's it's starting to break now but particularly when I began writing the film Tyler Perry was black film like there were no there were in in mid to in the mid 2000s there were very very few variations mm -hmm. on that it mm -hmm. was Tyler Perry and occasionally a historical black biopic mm -hmm. that's really all you got mm -hmm. and and now yeah. and now it's still that but mm -hmm. there's a few other things that are, are sort of c coming back in and and you know there's always like you know an independent black films that are happening sort of mm -hmm. under the radar. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, my issue, my beef was never really with Tyler Perry. I think Tyler Perry is is making work that is connecting to an audience. Why on earth would he stop? What inclin what why would he stop doing that? Which that, is what he said himself. Yeah, that, that makes mm -hmm. that, that for him, why would he stop? That doesn't make any sense. He, it's working the way it is. Why break you know, fix it if it isn't broke? What's broken to me is a system that says that is successful. Now let's only make that. Mm -hmm. And right. and because, you know, the industry has 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 shrunk so much since the early 90s. 90s, mm -hmm. you know, everything across the board has shrunk. I mean, this is sort of the same issue with, you know, why, why are movie, you know, studios making only these like giant tentpole movies and mm -hmm. not making the sort of mid-level adult movie. Everyone's sort of struggling with it, but I think because there were already so few, you know, films uh, dealing with people of color to begin with, mm -hmm. we've just really gotten, you know, it's been, just been really bad. It's been really hard to get other things through mm -hmm. that don't fit the quote unquote model mm -hmm. of what a successful black film looks like. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's, my beef is not really with Tyler. 
it's with an industry that says that's you know that's all black film is and mm -hmm. can never be mm -hmm. because there really are people you know who love the film and and, and wonder who's going to see it and it's like you you saw it and right, you exactly. liked it and, and you you'll tell somebody to yeah see that's it. how yeah. this thing works yeah. you know mm -hmm. um, and it's just interesting it's just interesting that that's the way our industry has sort of gotten to is it's a, it's I a can't wait for him system. to see the movie yeah I know I kind of yeah. and I think he would actually like it yeah. especially yeah. it doesn't really and, I really and by the way think he'll people are you on both sides of the Tyler Perry fence in the movie. I think there's a big laugh line in, you know, mm -hmm. F Tyler Perry, but people argue, including Sam actually, argue on both sides of the Tyler Perry fence, and I mm -hmm. think that's sort of what we do, because it's it's a topic that, you know, any yeah. black person is gonna talk about at some point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and a lot, of, a lot of my students look down on Tyler Perry, which is one of the reasons I keep coming back to that. Sure. Because uh, I think Tyler Perry is interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, I think that Tyler Perry's thing about being the new Chitlin circuit is, yeah. you know, fraught. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Did you say fraught? That's great. Oh, that was great. I love that. That is very true. Yeah. I was like, that's it. That's exactly. <laughs> you know? It's just fraught with what you want to put, put whatever it is underneath. It, it is. It's but you, you know what it is? It's like, it, I'm, I'm not his <laughs> audience. Like, I, I am not Tyler Perry's audience. Mm -hmm. But we were so hungry to see his, there wasn't images of us on screen when yeah. we first started coming yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And now we have more of an opportunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But so it, it's yeah. this idea that, like, because Tyler Perry makes a black mo movie with black characters, like, Mm -hmm. Somehow every black person is his audience. That's the that's, that's the yeah. misconception. And and also the flip that he becomes the ambassador. Like oh, he had right. that he yeah. has to have all the responsibility for making he's, positive right. content like, in I'm regards to the black community. He's like I have no interest he in making. Shouldn't have to. Yeah. Yeah. He can make the kind of movies he wants to make. It's sure. like saying to somebody that makes no all Adam idea. Sandler kind of movies mm -hmm. that that's you know what I mean. Yeah. That, that mm -hmm. They yeah. have to make some more adult, mm -hmm. thoughtful movies. Mm -hmm. Why? Like there are plenty mm -hmm. of people <laughs> making adult, thoughtful movies. But that's but that's just the thing. You know, it's it's there's just fewer opportunities to yeah. get black stories out there, and so it feels more pronounced to us because yeah. when the only offerings looks time and time again is like a, a black man in drag yeah. sort of playing this like you know mammy character mm -hmm. sort of well and, and it's not sort and by the way <laughs> and by the way and you and I both know it's not just Medea no, this is a rich yeah. history and of that cross of cross-dressing and playing that particular iteration of a black yeah. woman mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. confusing even a successful basketball player did yeah. that yeah. right I mean it's rooted and it's rooted in menstruality and it's mm -hmm. it's, no, no, it's, it's never that. quite left our cultural <laughs> subconscious right. and you know that is disturbing to me but I'm again I'm not the audience like the things I want to see like mm -hmm. just really aren't getting made or you know or it's not black it's not race specific mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know but this is a way this is a path for maybe the next movie because exactly. if we do well and I said before if we do well we are now a model for the next kid that wants mm -hmm. to do something different mm -hmm. and have people of color of any color by mm -hmm. the way and there are many other you know yeah. there are other races and experiences and minority cultures that are getting an even shorter end of the stick uh, than yeah. black folks Asian, which is crazy mm -hmm. yeah I mean if it's yeah too early to say but I've even had I have, I have good, good friends with some folks that go to Juilliard in their fourth years and they were recently having to do their presentation so they have to come to class and do scenes either from plays or from movies or from television and figure out and uh, I was asked if I could send a Dear White People script because there were oh. students that didn't know me but no, wow. knew about the movie and they wanted wow. to do that's scenes. So cool. <laughs> oh, that's so they wanted to do scenes from the film. So mm -hmm. they were like practicing. There were people in, that's in my cool. friends' class. That's actually, great. that's a doing thing. Dear White yeah. People. That's awesome. that's Sam Fred. I know and then, me too. And then I got to, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, I, so I'm asking them, I'm like, well, what was her Sam White like? He's like, oh, oh my God, that's great. That's, that's amazing. More, <laughs> a, little, a little more militant than you, actually. But You're like, but I was better, right? <laughs> I mean, so it's just really cool. And when uh -huh. I got to, when I met some of those students, they're, they're just very excited yeah. for me, but excited mm -hmm. for them too, yeah. because they're the next generation of actors mm -hmm. and it yeah. opens a door mm -hmm. for them. And that, that was just a really cool. Oh, it makes me yeah. feel good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's great. That's, awesome. that's yeah. really great. Yeah. And do you get asked a lot about uh, how you finance this film too? I mean, yeah, we do. Is that an in, in inspiration to people as well? Uh, I mean, our story is a little weird. It's not, it's, I mean, I inspirational? Know. No. 
Yeah. Okay. I'm, well, gonna, well, I'm well, just going to like inspire. Here's, the level, gonna, here's yeah. where it is yeah, inspirational, yeah. though, because we, I mean, I started with nothing and nobody, right? right. And, you know, we eventually, like, were financed by someone that we knew all along, and yeah. we went, you know, we were, we were That's fortunate, okay. we were fortunate enough to, like, go through the studio. So, so like, our story was, like, better than most, but mm -hmm. at the beginning of this journey, none of that was in play, and none of it was apparent. None, mm -hmm. none of it was a, a potential route. Mm -hmm. And what I was able to do is, I, I was able to take my concept trailer to the people. Mm -hmm. I put, I spent, you know, my tax right. return. Tax inspiration. I, I spent my tax return on it, and we raised forty-six grand mm -hmm. on YouTube off of a YouTube video. And mm -hmm. you know, and that I think anyone can do that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like we, I, I happened to want to tell a story that was going to cost more money than forty-six grand, but like we were able to get the attention that we needed to get to that level. Mm -hmm. um, you know, based on 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 doing the concept trailer, and that's something that couldn't have happened. You know, ten years ago. And, and, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. just to, if you also just talk about another inspirational thing, how you use social media to yeah, develop the sure. voices. Like, um, anyway, I think that's something that's like yeah. the hands of the people. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, yeah, the Dear White People Twitter account, before it was a movie, people just thought it was a joke account. You know, it was a, tw it was a Twitter <coughs> account where I would just do these Sweet. Dear White People jokes. Yeah. What no one knew is that I was actually trying to be in the voice of Sam White uh, right? while I was at work, frankly. Sorry, Paramount. But like, you know, <laughs> I wanted to like I wanted to stay thinking like her so mm -hmm. that like you know because I, I was focused on her character at that particular stage of the rewrite and I just really wanted to sharpen her voice I wanted to see what would work as funny to people mm -hmm. what people would find offensive mm -hmm. like how how does she respond to um, situations and current events in the world and uh, and it, you know everyone else was a joke account but to me it was like a, a research right. tool mm -hmm. and it's very call and response like yeah that's what people like which I and it's was immediate like, really Good. Like, that's really interesting. You, you, you see what's retweeted yeah. the most. You see what people are like, whoa, that was kind of mm -hmm. foul. You know, you, you immediately see it, and, and the reactions, positive and negative, really made the film. I mean, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. And are, get to that audience. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's your, your yeah. base. There are lines out of Coco's mouth that are verbatim criticism from people who felt some type of huh. way about one of the tweets, you know? And, oh, wow. And, that's really and, cool. and, and, so cool. And, yeah. that was, and that was really important to me that for everyone to have two sides to them, you know? Because mm -hmm. not everybody feels like Sam White, and not everybody digs her and what mm -hmm. she has to say mm -hmm. and and that and and there they have that, that's a legitimate response mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> you that's all are I got. precious <laughs> <laughs> I love you <laughs> she's like okay I'm done with you <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> <"I'm done>. thanks <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much, thank you so much. Really oh yeah I loved it